Should we gatekeep our fandoms from extremists and Mary Sue? Just the one. A single Mary Sue. Who's who? Which Mary Sue? We won't know until we we click. That's the clickbait. The Night's Watch is here. Welcome back to the watch. And Nathan. Mm -hmm. His name is Nathan? I'll forget that. Skim milk to me, buddy. So did did Fluffy leave? Are you just is it just the two of you now flying solar? Uh, that's their accent. Solar? Not solar. You can't they can't say it. How do you keep Mary Sue out of your fandoms? Who knows? Do they fire Fluffy? I don't know. I think Fluffy maybe abdicated the throne. What are your thoughts on gatekeeping fandoms? Uh, yeah, let's hear your your scathing. These guys are such fucking betas. These are the only two actual betas on planet Earth. Scientifically, that's a fake concept until these two arrived. It's an interesting topic because mm -hmm. I think as a community, as a positive community, there should be a welcoming introduction to new fans. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I think eventually fandoms do die out if you're always gatekeeping. Mm -hmm. However... However, I think when new fans are introduced to the fandom, there should also be not so much a set of rules, but like embrace the property. Yes. I think the, the war. Embrace the property. It's cold. Uh, all right. This is going to be a hot take. Uh, oh, mobs. Thanks for all dude. Hot take. I think consume media however you like and if you happen to commune with other people over that media fuck yeah there you go that's my take i think that's fine i don't think you need to gatekeep a goddamn person except for nazis but that's like not because of your fandom just nazis i have a zero tolerance for nazis homophobes stuff like that uh i have no i have no tolerance for that Really, boomers are kind of on the my shit list, too. But, I mean, like, you know, some of you are good guys. Warning sign is when they want to change it. And that's like, whoa, 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 hang on. We like this. We like the way it is. Mm. Uh, change And what? then if they're wanting to change it. Now, in terms of gatekeeping, right, yeah. you ultimately don't have any power to stop someone from enjoying something, no. really, unless you actually get in control of certain platforms and start, you know, shadow banning or just censoring and things like that. So <laughs> okay. Fantasies of grandeur, I see. It really happened to that extent in terms of uh, enjoying fandoms and stuff. Mm. And look, I've experienced negative gatekeeping in many ways, like in terms of uh, people trying to validate or invalidate uh, comments on a certain topic, and they would say, no true Scotsman fallacy kind of thing. You're not a true fan, so therefore opinion validated and yeah. stuff like that. And so there's that type of, I guess you could call it. So he I doesn't guess, he doesn't oh, like oh, it when it happens to him. But sometimes there's gatekeeping when we're actually trying to keep the sanctity of the property. That's good gatekeeping. You say soft gatekeeping, but that is probably the largest example of actual gatekeeping yes. is when the fans just say opinion rejected for whatever reason. For X reason, yeah. Yeah, and there are absolutely negative uses of that. The left love to do it heaps, right? The left. But what they've tried to um, uh, do with, uh, right. and when I say left, I mean extreme left, okay? Because we know there are a lot of people on the left who are not on board with this woke activist nonsense, right? Not the woke okay. activists. Watch us and... Hey, Shad. Hi, big fan, man. Do you think that you would, uh, I actually, no, how about this? In, in a different, uh, because you're a sword guy, I challenge you to a duel of wits, um, in having a casual conversation about the topic of woke activism, for instance, and why you're opposed to it and why I'm for it, big time, whatever the wokiness is. I would love to have a conversation with you. Uh, at this point, I think it's, it's time, in my opinion. We are grateful for you watching. Thank you. We appreciate you, right? Um, uh, because I really hope that conservatives and uh, people on the left, are like, there's a lot that we get along with, mm. right? Um, Nate, who works with us uh, on Shadowversity, is actually is very left with his policies. Get along great. He's a great guy. Well, why can't we just go back to getting along and f ignoring politics? Well, I think the biggest problem we've had recently is just the polarizing Ooh. effect of yes. everything. Like, things mm. have been so opinionated. Like, you can't just watch an X-Men cartoon without being strongly opinionated on characters and their bios and whether or not you should be okay. even allowed to watch it. X-Men's political, always has been. As far as far as the everything's so divisive, we keep voting for like fascists, man. It's not like we're not having normal disagreements about like 
I don't know if we should have this uh, parking lot built because I want to build a, a, a storage warehouse in this part of the town. It's like, you know, like Comptroller stuff, you know, like shitty, normal, boring, benign society shit. Instead, you're arguing like, hey, should human beings seeking happiness have rights? And for me, that's a yes. They should, they should have rights to seek happiness. <laughs> And you're like, no, I actually think they should be miserable. And so we're stuck in that, you know? Like, like nerds have been opinionated about nerds. fandom forever. Yes. I, and I think that's good. Nerds fighting about nerd stuff is good. It's when they start fighting about changing the property and uh -huh. injecting, you know, stuff that doesn't belong there. All right. That's uh -huh. what gets polarizing. So, but there so needs to be. It seems to me that the common problem with conservatives in general, is that due to the nature of conservatism, the culture passes them by, and then they go, hey, where are you going? We're back here. And like 30% of the population is back there, and the rest of us are up there, and we're going, no, we're actually up here. Come on, let's go. And then slowly some of them go, but most of them just die back there. And, and they have kids back there, and some of the kids got to catch up. It's a whole thing, man. Just dragging these mental dead weights along. He pushed back against it. And mm. this is when the counter gatekeeping almost becomes a necessity to stop our beloved franchise getting hijacked and completely ruined. How many have we seen this happen to? Like, Star Trek... Doctor Who. Um, Doctor Star Wars Who. is a big one. Indiana yes. Jones. Why is Doctor Who ruined? He man. Even friggin' Scooby Doo for crying Scurby, out loud. Scurby, I, dear. I like though, like, cause those things have been corrupt. Dude, I I loved Scurby Dur when I was growing up. Get some Scurber snurks. Eat some some Scurby snurks. Did they never? I don't think personally ever become Star Trek, you know, the series about space communism with the first internet interracial kiss on TV. It's woke, right? It just became woke, yeah. No, wait. Star 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 Trek was never political. What are you guys talking about? X-Men never political. Hello, have you read X-Men? Have you seen the show? What is even a little bit political about the bad guy being a senator in the US government? The, the the bad guy of the series, one of the bad guys, is a, is a sitting senator. That's his. <laughs> and they're persecuting a specific group of people based on nothing that they've done, something they were born with. I don't see any politics in that. You're wokes. You're just woke, I think. Into the fandom. Like, so, sorry, Ghostbusters. Yes. Like, I, when you think of Halo Transformers, fans, Lord of the Rings, Wheel of Time, it just keeps going! <laughs> Wheel of Time. So if the adaptation sucks... By the way, Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, they're already working on season three. Season two is coming out. They're going to get all five seasons of this shit out, and it's good so far. If it starts to suck, I'll be sad, but it's not sucked yet. It's been very good. Deep Space Nine, arguably the best Star Trek series, is all about politics. Yeah. Yeah. We're watching... By the way, if you have a Prime sub, we're watching the Lord of the Rings series together when it comes out. I feel like most Wheel of Time is good too. I didn't like it. Tolkien. The books, the books are good. I hear Robert Jordan, long book series. And fans, I'm not accepting of Rings of Power. That was Halo awesome. fans. I'm not going to be. What did Transformers do to be woke? I don't know. I haven't watched that shit. Being season one and two of Halo. Was it too gay for me? Wheel of Time? No, it was just fucking bad. It was boring. The effects were shitty. This, it was just all bad. I didn't really like the acting either. Because it just isn't yes. the thing. Like. Sure, we're not gatekeeping stuff, but at the same time, they're rejecting it. But People I, don't care because it's not the thing to begin with. But I, I actually feel the um, Lord of the Rings backlash uh, to Rings of Power was gatekeeping done right. Yeah. It was massively successful. Gatekeeping done right. They did it! They stopped the show. Wait a second. They didn't stop the show. It's still happening. It's still good. Yeah. Yes. We are defending Tolkien. We are defending this franchise. Don't yeah. you dare subvert. And of course they did anyway, but then we like wholly mocked, wholly rejected. It really wasn't. It has his, his, his huge fan base. They're, they're upset about interpretations of like Silmaril content and how it bridges the gap. 
from like the second age into the third age of of Tolkien's world. I think it's great. I think Tolkien would li- I think Tolkien would have appreciation for this, especially the focus on friendship and relationships throughout the series. I think it's a lot of it's beautiful writing. Some of it's really great. It, it really has the spirit of Tolkien. They're mad because Galadriel is a fighter and powerful. She's always been powerful. It it actually dude, it I did not have high hope. Well, I had high hopes. I did not have high expectations for the Rings of Power. It's awesome. I love it. I'm going to watch season one again right before season two comes out. Yes, but I also just think the term gatekeeping isn't correct because they weren't necessarily... Fox Mocking is good too. ...saying you producers can't make a Lord of the Rings show. It's you're changing things and therefore this is incorrect. Yeah, but, but if we had the power to stop them, I would say, yes. no, you're fired. <laughs> no. Then, like, they could still read the books and watch the sh- like do other things. Like yes. In terms of gatekeeping, I feel like that's that's not the right word that people are using now. They're like, oh, you, we can't touch your properties, your gatekeeping and stuff. It's like, well, no, we're not saying you know, no leftists allowed in the comic book club. We're just saying, hey, this cherished property that you now have rights to make content for, you're changing, and we don't like it. Yeah, yeah. And so one of the... Uh, points of uh, i guess um uh, sneaking in the, the opening kind of crack in the gate or everything was the whole uh, uh this franchise should be for everyone mm. you know this franchise should be for everyone oh are they talking so it's woke because they had like a black dwarf <laughs> uh yeah i think i think it was a, a massive oversight to not to not include more diversity in the first place i mean it makes sense it's culturally interesting there are there are black and brown people throughout these lands that are discussed. It's interesting. Black elves too. Yeah. I mean, who cares? I don't know. I thought I didn't take me out at all. I didn't even think about it until you guys brought it up. I actually hadn't considered it whatsoever. And the only reason I paid any mind to it, the only reason it was in my mind at all, uh, was in between watching episodes and seeing fucking chuds be mad that there's a black dwarf who, by the way, was a great actress or the, uh, the, the, main actor for the elf uh, is very good as well and that alone is laced with so many false assumptions right mm. for instance comic books comic books everyone can enjoy it if they guys want up. but it's not made for everyone this is true like it has a, people can't well, enjoy that, books, yeah. and it has a very specific targeted audience once upon a time yes boys it's a Ooh. male focused genre but he- oh man, they're very, you're very focused on gender. Even then it's like, okay, we've got to be more specific there in terms of like superhero comics mm-hmm. or like Marvel DC comics. Like in terms of comics, anyone can read a comic. Who? Like anyone can yes. make a comic and there's so many genres of comics, like that's okay. Who do, who writes a comic and is like, I only want boys to read this. You know? When you get more specified, you know, superhero, like Superman isn't for everyone because he's an optimistic American. Mm-hmm. Not everyone is optimistic and not everyone loves America. Like, that's just yeah. a state of fact. So when you get into those specific things, like, yes, things aren't made for everyone because once you start doing that, you, oh, it's impossible because well, it changes. Yeah, so they're not, I don't think they're trying to make every book for every person. They're just trying to make sure that the stories represent reality. Go. Like, not everyone's white, man. It's just, they want they want people to be able to see themselves in the characters, and so it has to reflect the audience in some way. This is how storytelling works, by the way. So it resonates with an audience. It must reflect the audience in some way. To see someone that looks like you on the screen saying something that you agree with or disagree with, whatever, like being able to relate in some way, in other ways. You can also relate to ones that don't look like you, but it just you know it's just nice to see. It's nice to see all these people. <laughs> it. It's a diverse cast. It's good. It's not like forced or anything. I feel like every casting decision was made well. I actually feel like the casting was they did the thing that they say that the, you, they want you to do where they're like just just hire the best person for their job. It genuinely feels like the Lord of the Rings just hired the best person for the job based on the different characters, right? Like some of them that were already canon, like Galadriel for instance, she's played by a white actress. I won't give any. I won't give any spoilers for the other for the other people in the in the TV show, but there are there are some appearances by others. I also like the actor for Finrod, uh, who had like two scenes, but I think did great in both of them. Like, pretty much stole both scenes, and I'm pretty sad that that we don't get more Finrod. Maybe we'll, I mean maybe we'll get some more. But that's exactly right. And so when they come in saying this needs to be made for everyone. They're saying it needs to be more representative. And that's the whole thing that they've done to try and correct, improve, fix all these beloved properties is to make it 
more representative, you know? Women. Is that a regular Mountain Dew? Correct. Improve, fix all these beloved properties is to make it. We're getting told we're too woke by a 15 year old child drinking his dad's Mountain Dew. Okay, you can have one, says Shad before we turn this on. More representative, you know? Women need to be seen in it. Black people need to be seen in it. But white people, no, 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 no you're not seen in like Asian cinema or whatever cinema. You don't, you're, you're not white seen. people? There's several white characters throughout many of the main characters. Like four of the main characters in Lord of the Rings are white. There's like, all, I can't think of, you mentioned a bunch of different superheroes, all of which were white men supposed to be seen right uh, because it's all about their representative narrative and then there's the underlining racism and also blackwashing redheads and gingers is kind of lazy though i don't think they did though i don't remember them blackwashing anybody there was just some black characters just sexism and everything they say that hang on are you saying that people can't identify with a character or a property if they don't look like them i can't identify with a black character because you're saying that black people can't identify with the lord of the rings that we're literally saying is because there's no black people in it mm. right and now that actress who played d's like now black people will finally be able to be seen in it and stuff like that and now, there are even people saying that they couldn't get into it because of which is just racism all right and it is so vile and awful because that's like i've enjoyed so much asian cinema martial arts flicks and everything like that you, you, even people identify with wally and is a robot for crying out loud you know like humanity when you break it down defies any sort of race or, yes. or gender it's it's racist to include black people in the production of the thing is a wild take in my opinion shad like she just does a good job i like truly she has such good chemistry with her on-screen husband a, a dwarf prince uh, in the show like she's she's a strong character she does a great job like and she's one she's one of some tribe or some tribes some clans I guess is what they call them some clans of dwarves that are there I don't know Jake he's not he's not racist because he likes Asian movies oh that's my fault like we're all human it transcends it the yeah. human the the if you see the human nature in things doesn't need to look look like you look at wally great example right if you see humanity in that we will humanize and connect and be uplifted by it but the people who do not believe that are actual racists actual sexists and stuff like that and so when they say it needs to be made for everyone they're saying it needs to change mm. right what needs to change this is an adaptation of source material that hasn't had an on-screen or or i mean any any i mean probably fanfic but not, not anything officially produced this is wide open man when the truth is anyone had the freedom to enjoy it in the first place mm -hmm. but that was the narrative it's crazy that you say we have to hire only white people for this project like there are people from another country in uh middle earth sort of that you know uh it makes sense like it, i i'm pretty sure like i don't want to spoil it you should watch the show uh if you're a lord of the rings head i really liked it I'd like to remind everyone this guy is a rape writer, not letting that go. Oh, yeah, the main character that you see on the back there with his book is a rapist. Right? It's like, oh, no, it has to be made for everyone. But they don't actually believe that. Oh, no, because it's not possible. Well, well, not only that. I don't think they're trying to make it for everyone. They don't want it for the well, other when side. They say this is everyone, straw man. They mean they want them. They want it made for them, not the toxic side or any other political persuasion that um disagrees with them and we've known this for ages but here is another mask off moment by the mary sue and well, that just gives it away then doesn't it It does like this is an ultra agenda driven extremist feminist online rag basically and <laughs> it is a what? post or article by rachel leishman by the way i think this um this thing i oh, don't know no. so yeah this is very Twitter, boring but, and she says, how are all these neckbeards? Thank you. Sheesh. Took a long time. How are all these neckbeards and Republican fans of X-Men? They're literally not for you. That's true. And Republican fans of the X-Men. They're literally not for you. Yeah, that's which true. Is rewriting the past about the X-Men. But also... It's not it's actually rewriting the past about X-Men. It's... <laughs> X-Men has always been progressive. Not for X group of people. I mean, as progressive as it can be. Seems very counterintuitive to that. It's... So... Do you not notice a diverse cast of characters from the very jump in X Men? Is that woke? For everyone, mm. this was lots of women with strong, strong heroes. By the way, we always say Ellen Ripley, and we never say fucking rogue or something. We should never about inclusion. This was about dominance and supremacy and revenge, as proven here. Mary Sue is an explicit feminist, you know, website. And 
what do you think feminism means, man? Go. <laughs> and what is it about X-Men about Shat? Tell me. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what he thinks is going on. And they are not wanting to be inclusive here. They are wanting to exclude. Storm has always been punk. I have, there's, I have, tra well, I had trading cards from the 90s. Do you guys remember the X-Men trading cards? I brought them up on stream before. That there, you know, there were many Storm variants, and and she she's always been like, you know, kind of punk. The people they disagree with, because it's never been about equality. Mm. All right, and they're overt about it. These are blatant of sexist people who are just after power and just after co-opting and overtaking the cultural pillars of influence. The X Men. Are you gonna nod and say yeah, skim milk, without making eye contact? And X Men yeah. is one of them. Or yeah, he's embarrassed to be here. Classic. Might even become, was one of them. Because what happens is, when they overtake these things, they ruin them, and it loses all relevance re <laughs> because they ruin Revelance. it. Like, who gives a crap about Star Wars now? Very few. Even the most hardcore fans. We just have lost interest. We don't yeah. care anymore. Okay, so Star Wars got bad the second you guys got mad at Ryan Johnson and Disney listened. For the record. Also, and or fucks. It's the same with Marvel stuff. Like, people who used to go to every single MCU mm -hmm. movie because it was MCU. It was going to be <coughs> good. Nobody goes now. The theaters are literally empty. Well, I mean, that's not because they're woke. That's because they didn't put the same care into Phase 4 or whatever that they did for Phase 3. Yeah. They got ruined by capitalism. They made too much. They really did. That said, if they were still really quality, we'd go to them. But they're kind of, you know, they kind of put them out hoping that people would just, like, ride ride it out. But there's still some good Marvel stuff. Loki was awesome, for for instance. What was that? WandaVision was really good. I liked uh, the Werewolf by Midnight thing. Loki was really great. Like, look at how well the Marvels did. You're right. Oh, and even a Ooh, I liked uh, the one with Oscar Isaac, Moon Knight. Jason kind of super related uh, Marvel stuff, Madam Web. And then also just have a look at how well Indiana I like Strange too. It's fun. It's not the best the movie. But... Destiny did. Yeah. Like they ruin it to uh, recreate in their image and then no one likes it. And it, and again, when they do that, they're not making it for everyone. Mm. They're making it for extremists like themselves, just sexists. Deadpool's going to be good too, Deadpool 3. And then the X-Men and Fantastic Four, if those are good, it's back, dude. We'll be back in there. Chad thinks Madam oh, Webb is MCU, Jesus. I guess. Like themselves. Uh, and for right, brings about for racists like themselves, right? Thank and you, possums. Most people in the world, this is, a, this is the shocking thing, Nathan. Most people in the world actually aren't sexist hmm. or, or, or that most aren't racist either and stuff. And so when they see these changes for those explicit reasons, they reject it. Yeah. But it's just. A wow. Thank you so much for fucking adding to the conversation. These. This is a failed project, Shad. This is an absolute failed project. It's only going to get worse from here. A sign of their agenda on display, okay? And so now X-Men is the new kind of thing because there's a new X-Men. There's a yeah, the new, new TV show. Thing they're cartoon, making. and it's kind of a sequel to the old 80s cartoon. They barely know what they're talking about. Awesome. Love that for us. And warning signs already that this is just going to be another Marvel rewritten and uh, hijacked property. Uh -huh. Even though there were elements that look good, there's been warning signs already about propaganda injected into it changes only for the changes sake and stuff um and there's even rumors that, like storm is gonna probably be the um, you know the main main, main, main yeah. character as well as um storm's gonna be the main character i bet they're all gonna be the main character man maybe storm will have like a storyline because i don't think storm did storm have a main a major storyline throughout the three seasons of the original run there was definitely some some storylines but i don't know uh, Shad's friend gives all the input. A uh, copy paste reaction YouTuber. Storm led the X Men for years. Storm is Storm is one of the most powerful X Men, obviously. Is that the eighties cartoon? Yeah, it's definitely a nineties cartoon. These guys never hear of an ensemble cast. No, definitely not. Uh, Kron is actually the name of the god of the corn. Rogue and Kitty Pride also being leaders and everything like that. There, the men kind of going to be pushed to the sideline. And mm. I mean, there's adaptations I can see with them being leaders but the yeah. fact that you're in a group and especially when you have these other heroes who are more clearly been distinctly leaders in the past it makes no sense for them suddenly to be like all right it's the mm -hmm. 90s i'm gonna step back now it doesn't make sense for scott summers to not want to be the leader after his fucking wife dies 
I don't know, man. Management rollover happens. You feel me? Like sometimes the captain of the team has to step down and give it to the best, the actual best guy on the team. Okay, a little sports for you. And the I, sports. I, I think Storm did end up leading the X Men at one point, but that was after Cyclops. They're like the, the, the logical, natural person to lead him after. You know. Okay. And- by the way, Cyclops. No shade to Cyclops. Actually, full shade. Uh, he is my least favorite X Men. Always has been. Literally the worst. Least interesting X Men. I do not like. I do not like Cyclops. I dig his design. I like. I even like the power thing. But he's he's the only reason. Okay, so the reason he's the leader is because they looked at all of the characters and were like, "Well, why is this guy even in the group?" And they're like, "Well, it's clear that he's the leader. That's the only because he's got laser beam eyes. He's clearly a backup ranged character. You know what I mean? He's not. Ca- they, he's not Captain America." Cyclops is boring. The best part about Cyclops is that he's a goody two shoes and that Logan doesn't like him. That's the best part about Cyclops is his interactions with Logan. And Logan being right every time. Gambit is definitely up there. He was he's the coolest X-Men. He's not the best X-Men. It's it's definitely Wolverine. It's basic bitch, but it, he's still the coolest X-Men. Rogue is actually one of my favorite low key. Nightcrawler is my number two, though. I really like Nightcrawler. I've always liked Nightcrawler. Super cool. Cyclops has a good story. I mean, he's just boring. And even though Cyclops is leading him in the, in the, the trailer, trailer yeah. rumor is that that's not going to last. And that's the thing. That's not going to then last you with your property because you're baiting switching viewers mm-hmm. when they go watch and go, oh, this is what... I mean, they- it won't... Okay, so if you have a Cyclops story that has him losing leadership and that's his arc, that's good, actually. Like, I think that's interesting. Like why is Cyclops here is a great they do it with The Last of Us they do it with everything else so they always do like oh yeah Joel's gonna be in the whole game and then they're gonna kill him at the first you know 15 minutes and then everyone's gonna hate the game like and then people get mad at the fact they don't want like the property anymore they go oh superhero movies are dead now it's like well no you killed them <laughs> yeah so they make multiple changes um, and a lot of them are purely agenda driven they weren't needed uh, they don't respect the original properties they're remaking it for Basically, to the, appeal to them, yeah, and yeah, to not the fans. Cheap dollar, yeah, yeah, exactly. But not the fans; they're not going to make a dollar out of it, and they're not going to make a dollar. I mean, I'm, I'm watching X Men. I'm seeing what it's like. I'm going to check it out. I I love the old '97 series. I don't even remember. It's another. What happened in the X Men? Here's an example of. And by the way, this um, uh, the person who wrote this, right? She has gotten so many owns. So she tried to attack Gary from. She has gotten so many owns. Internet speak saying, I bet this guy's never even watched a Doctor Who episode in his life. Gary responded with, show me your Doctor Who stuff, right? And this is his collection. And this is with her accusing him that he's never watched a Doctor Who episode. <laughs> like, he's one of the biggest Doctor Who fans. And I'm like, those are all oh the DVDs. But I just like, like, one picture would be evidence <laughs> yeah, that the first one was fine. And then by, by the end, it goes, here's a whole series of like Doctor yeah. Who on DVD. It's and Blue. And like, Yeah, and Gary is a true fan. The, the author of this article, right? Yeah. So, yeah, co- collecting media doesn't mean you have media literacy. True. She's not an actual fan of this stuff. Th- th- these properties are a means to an end to further their agenda. That's all. I really disagree. I don't think about my agenda or politics at all <laughs> when when enjoying some Lord of the Rings or, or something. If it just so happens to line up, it's like, oh, whoa, they're doing a thing. Like... The only time politics comes up is when is when they do something fucked up or you guys bitch about it. And then I have to go, oh, wait, that was political. There's the agenda. It was political because they made Storm in charge political. It's politics. Well, what Fem- it is. Uh, femoids, you know, am I right? I'm going to remake their Chat? image, appeal to them. You know how femoids? Push what they want to rewrite and socially engineer society and stuff. Because if they love <coughs> this stuff, they were true fans. Why would they want to change it? You guys should consider seppuku. Like it's the honorable way out at this point. These are sword guys, right? This is just this is just really poorly done. We should we should get the swords out, run each other through, bro seppuku, get it over with. There's just no there's no reason for this anymore. Honor your ancestors. You know, that's what I was saying about the wheel of time. Like they say they're fans of the Wheel of Time, right? Why do they then think there are problematic, problematic elements in the story they want to change, like the gendered nature of the magic? He said he said he liked a- Asian women or something earlier, creepy, right? So, or Asian movies—that's what it was. Go. 
I can never tell. He looks like a guy. He looks like a guy that would be like that, though. The European sword guys say, like, chop the chopping block. Okay. That the uh, male characters are the heroes of the story. Harry Carey? Didn't Harry Carey die of natural causes because he was old? Am I nuts? Go. Harry Carey was a uh, Cubs... Chicago Cubs baseball announcer for a long time. That's who Harry Carey is. Being a fan of something means you can't have criticism. That's right. Wank pheasants. Ooh, interesting. Change it if they love it so much. It's because they don't. They're lying. Okay? And this is when good gatekeeping needs to kind of come in back into the practice where, just like with Rings of Power, reject it whole. Like, no, we... And, like, we don't have power to stop people from... <laughs> yeah, damaging these oh, things. I guess it does. You can, you know, vote with your wallet and uh, and also call it out when you see it. And They're nailing it. They're gatekeeping us. No. That's what we do here. Because that's what we do. Stay on watch. Wow. Well, because that's what we do. Do you like your job, Skim Milk? How are you doing, bro? Do you like it here? Can we have a talk with that guy? Does he have a Twitter? Did I already look for this little guy's Twitter account? Night's Watch. Do they not? Do you not have a link to Nathan's little channel? Am I? I thought you. I thought they had a link before. Uh, I would love to talk to one of these guys at some point about their silly little beliefs. That'll never happen, of course. Can you imagine? Can you imagine Shadowversity actually having a conversation with someone he disagrees with? Actually, if I could make that happen with anybody, it would not be me. It would be Jack Saint. That would be fucking hilarious.